Yo, what's up guys? My name is ASC and welcome to a new video. I have a little team building video for you guys and after this team building part I will display a game me in with in me using this team and yeah uh I played about 26 games with this team. Um I think I only lost four, so I won 22 out of 26. Which is not bad, which is not bad. Um, uh, the only games I lost was against the biggest threat to this team. But when not facing the threat, uh, I will talk about that later. Uh, the team lost pretty, pretty well. Um, yeah, a lot of you guys have been requesting uh, some sort of a video about regenerator mods. So decided to build a team with regenerator mods and uh, also around Hydrogen because I really wanted to use Hydrogen. I think Hydrogen is a really, really good good Pokemon. Uh, has a lot of resistance being a dark type and a dragon type. Um, so it fits on a lot of teams. Uh, choice Specs is a bit uh, more difficult to put on a team because it gets outspeed by a lot of th things. Um, Choice Scarf Hydrogen is a bit easier to put on teams, but it does way less damage. So, really wanted to build around a Choice Packs Hydrogen. So, uh, with Regenerator, a lot of pivots around it. And yeah, let's actually go through this team. I actually have a Poker Base link in the description if you guys are interested in using this team. But uh, yeah, let's go right into it, boys. So first off, we have Hydrogen with the Choice Packs. Um, we use four attacks, Draco Meteor, Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Flash Cannon. You could run Fire Blast if you really want to, but Flamethrower still one shots Ferrothorn. It's still two hit KOs Among Us, and Flamethrower doesn't miss. <laughs> uh, standard EV Spread, Timid, Max Speed, Max Attack. Uh, we don't run U-Turn uh, on this set because we just want to click buttons. Uh, we don't. You don't need to gain momentum with Hydrogen. Oh, you don't really want to gain momentum with Hydrogen. We just want to click buttons and, and do damage and, or kill stuff. So that's basically the main idea. We have Flash Cannon uh, to hit Clefable. You could run Earth Power if you are annoyed by some Heatrans. But still, Choice Specs Dark Pill still does a lot to Heatran as well. So I think uh, this gives us the overall best coverage. Uh, running on Hydrogen. Uh, the first mod that I want to talk about is Tangrowth. Uh, because Hydrogen has a weakness to fighting. Uh, obviously, Tangrowth doesn't resist it, but Tangrowth does take on a lot of physical offensive mods. And I kind of wanted something on the team um, that could kind of switch into Conkelder, because Conkelder could mock punch the Hydrogen. And if I'm locked into Dark Pulse, it can even Drain Punch. Uh, Tangrowth also lives uh, an Icicle Crash from Weavile or Mamoswine. And if Weavile is banded, you can switch into another mod that resists uh, the Icicle Crash. We, we talk about that later. But and overall, Tangrowth also taking a lot of uh, taking a lot of Dragon type Pokémon on, like Dragon Knight and Garchomp, and hitting them with. The HP Ice, and the reason I have Leaf Storm, by the way, on this uh, Tangrowth over Giga Drain is just because uh, we want to switch it in against the Kukelder. Kukelder, if it doesn't go for knockoff, it has to take Rocky Helmet damage twice. If it does go for knockoff, uh, Tangrowth still is very healthy, and a Leaf Storm that does at least 60 uh, to 70 percent. Uh, to uh, Flame Warp Conkelder, which is really, really, really nice and a lot of damage. Uh, we use Sludge Bomb as well. Uh, Sludge Bomb hitting things like Clefable, opposing Tangrowth. And it's overall a good mid ground play because it has a 30% chance to poison your opponent, which is never bad. And yeah, obviously, HP Ice to hit those. Um, a lot of Pokemon with a dual weakness to Ice type attacks. Aka Garchomp, Dragonite, those kind of Pokemon. And we run Earthquake. I don't have knockoff on this Pokemon because we have two other Pokemon that are using knockoff as well. So that would be a bit overkill. And by having Earthquake, we can kind of take on Bisharps because 
Tangrowth doesn't die to a plus two life orbed adamant knockoff from a Bisharp. Then you can hit him with Earthquake. And if Tangrowth does end up dying, Hydrogen doesn't take anything from Sucker Punch and can just knock it out. And a, a Regenerator Core, uh, we were talking about a Regenerator Core, but a Regenerator co Core should never be played without a Tornadus in my opinion. Just too good not to use when it's available. Uh, I'm using the Pivot Set. Oh, by the way, let me explain the EVs from the Tangrowth. Because um, we have 244 points into HP, uh, 48 points into Special Defense, and we put the rest into special into Defense. Uh, 244 HP gives us um, the maximum healing with Regenerator. Uh, you could make it max by adding 252, but it doesn't change the Regenerator um, recovery you get from the ability. The 48 points uh, makes sure, uh, it's just a little thing, but you live things like an ice beam from a from a from a life of starmy uh a non-analytic ice beam that is <laughs> if it's analytic you obviously die and we put the rest into the fans to take on as many physical attacks as we can and yeah, like we said uh regenerator core should never be played without a tornadoes in my opinion uh we use the pivot set as well with the rocky helmet uh, cause we kinda need a defogger, Hydron can, can good run defog, but we use 4 attacks on it, so we need another defogger. And Tornadoes can pivot into a lot of things, uh, be, and with max HP it can even take on special attacks if it really need to. The sp special defense that's from the torna from Tornadoes is even better than the physical defense uh, stat, so it's also something to consider. Uh, and this is just a nice pivot because uh, what well, a pivot is is basically a Pokemon you can s switch in multiple times and go from there and with going from there means uh, maybe knocking off to get rid of an item which makes it easier for the other members on the team um, or even you turning so that you can um, gain momentum and that's that's a big thing as well uh, that's why we have tornadoes because tornadoes can switch into some fighting type attacks and they tornadoes also forces out a lot of offensive pokemon because tornadoes speeder is amazing it, it speeds pretty much um, most of the pokemon in the meta game the uh, most offensive pokemon in the meta game i'm uh, talking about alakazam gengar uh, scarf titar gets outsped as well and by forces, forcing them out, you can U-turn, and if they switch into something that Hydrogen could kill, it's a free switch into Hydrogen, and you can drop a Draco, click Dark Pulse. And Dark Pulse is uh, mainly the attack you use on Hydrogen. Dark Pulse is such a nice offensive move, because there are only th three types that resist. The Dark Pulse being Dark types, Fighting types, and Fairy types. But there's no immunity to Dark Pulse, which is really nice. Um, I rarely drop a Draco, but sometimes you do need the damage. But yeah, that's also a free way of getting in the Hydrogen and also the Weavile, which we will talk about later as well. Uh, getting those Pokemon in safely is a nice way. And to finish this Regenerator Core, we have Slowking. Because uh, we use Hydrogen, Tangrowth and Tornadus, three Pokemon that are weak to ice type attacks so we kind of need that ice type resist so we adding slow king um having slow king here as well means we don't lose to rain teams because we we, we are not using an assault fast tank growth we're using a physical defense defensive tank growth so the physical defensive tank growth also gets two hit KO'd in the rain by hydro pump or sir from uh for example a kingdra so having a slow king just ensures we don't lose to rain teams and I'm using um, this EV spread, 252 points into HP, make it as bulky as possible. We put 4 points into speed, so we outspeed Among Us, which means we go first and can hit it with the Psy Shock. Uh, 200 points into Special Defense. Um, Slowking already has a really nice Special Defense, but adding these 200 EVs means that if a Rotom Volt switches on us, um, the damage we take, basically, uh, we can regenerate back with the ability. It does about 30 to 32% as well, uh, the full switch. 
and yeah, you just regenerate it all back. But and uh, we have nasty blood. I kind of wanted to test it out because uh, Slow King. Uh, that way, Slow King can kind of take on some Clefable sets because then you hit Clefable on the physical side. Now you already have. A uh, nice special defense that so even after a few comments from Clefable, Clefable still might not be able to knock a two hit KO the Slow King. Meanwhile, you're hitting him on the, uh, the Clefable on the physical side. Um, but you could also run Toxic, uh, I'll talk about that later. Uh, next up, we have Heat Strength because we kind of need a Stealth Rocker as well. Um, as you can see, we don't have a ground type on this team, which is a bit of a weakness. It's a bit of a weakness, but the reason we want Heatran over something like Landorus is because... It, imagine if we take Landorus as, as the style wrecker here. How are we going to beat a Clefable who did set up a Calm Mind? Because Sloking might beat it, Sloking might beat it, but... Um, if the Clefable gets some special attack drops, it can become really difficult for the Sloking. Hydrogen has Flash Cannon, but after a Calm Mind, Hydrogen doesn't 2 hit KO. The Clefable anymore, and Hydrogen gets one shot by a Moonblast. Obviously, Tangrowth loses to a Magic Guard Clefable because the poison doesn't do any damage. And after a Calm Mind Sludge Bomb, no way Sludge Bomb to it KOs uh, Clefable. Tornadus doesn't have something like Taunt or anything, so it doesn't do, do it. And then you kind of have to rely on flinching the Clefable with Icicle Crash, which means hitting it uh, multiple times in a row and also needing to flinch. Uh, Clefable one or two times depending on the health is, it has. Heatran is just a guaranteed way of beating uh, the Clefable because we can taunt it and we take nothing from Moonblast. And it's just Heatran overall is just a solid stealth rocker and it also helps us against uh, a Scizor because Tangrowth and Slow King, even though they don't mind the Bullet Punch, they don't like the U-turn. Uh, usually you pivot Tornadus in on the Scissor first because it can run super power. Um, if they do go for the Bullet Punch, you know from the damage whether they are Choice Bandit or not. And our last Pokemon is Weavile, uh, be adding a bit of uh, a nice speed here as well because we we're we run choice packs Hydrogen, so we need some sort of speed control, and that's going to be our Weavile. Uh, ju just so we can trap things like Gengar with Pursuit, Alakazam with Pursuit, Thunderous as well. Thunderous be otherwise becomes a big threat if we don't have Weavile to check it. Because Thunderous outspeeds uh, these mods, and Tornadus doesn't beat Thunderous. So that's basically the idea. And also having a strong knockoff, like we have a we have a weak knockoff here to just to be annoying. But um knockoff two hit KO's Rotom. Even if Rotom is running max defense, the first one does over 60%, and the next one does over 40%. So um just nice to have. And the ice shard as well. If a, a, for example, Dragon type Pokemon gets out of control and gets a few Dragon Dances. We still have the option of killing it with the Ice Shard, and even Dragonite doesn't kill Weaver with the extreme speed at plus one. So it's just nice to check some offensive threats as well. And that's basically the team. Now let's talk about things I, uh, that you might struggle with using this. Uh, the biggest one is Weaver, guys, because we did. The way of playing around Weavile is pivoting into Tangrowth. Um, you live on Icicle Crash. If they go for Knockoff, they take Rocky Helmet Chip. But if you go, if they go for Icicle Crash, you can switch into Heatran or Slow King. Uh, if you know they're Bandit, you can bring in Heatran, get up Rocks. Um, Slow King. You can, but you can also bring in Slow King and then pivot out again to Prog, the Regenerator. Uh, for Corona might also be a difficult one, uh, depending on the set. Uh, the full Corona needs Hidden Power Ground to be threatening to this team. And if it's Lumberry, it be can become really scary because Heatron can only live one plus one um, Hidden Power Ground. So if you switch it in and they go for Quiver Dance and you Toxic them, but they have Lumberry, uh, you might lose there because. Heatran is just gonna die then. 
So another way of checking the full corona might be to uh, with adding a nasty plot on. Uh, adding the toxic instead of the nasty plot on slow king because i didn't really use a nasty, nasty plot in the 26 games the only times i used it and it worked was against the mungus uh basically clicking nasty plot and one shotting it with psy shock so on that note you might it might be better to just click uh, choose toxic so you have a guaranteed check against the full corona and yeah another threat and that's again we thought we've all again uh is our uh, pursuit trappers because slow king checks a lot of months and uh, deals with a lot of rain teams i it ate up rain teams i never had problems against rain teams using this team but uh, for example, a combination of Weavile and Keldeo. If I don't have Slow King, uh, Weavile might, uh, Keldeo might overpower this team. So if they makes maybe make a double into Weavile on my Slow King switch, I might be in trouble. Because if I switch out on a pursuit, Slow King is gonna die. If I stay in on a knockoff, Slow King is gonna die. So that's that's a big one uh, to consider. So. Uh, maybe it might not be bad to run a gold barberry on the slow king um, to not die to a pursuit but i just love le leftovers way too much but if you really are going to struggle against pursuit trappers which that's the only that those were the only few games i lost against the weaver because it pursuit trapped my slow king and then i got overpowered by the other months and low kick life of weavile as well because <laughs> life of weavile can switch up moves bandit is not too difficult to deal with but life warp is kind of annoying uh so yeah you can definitely make some adjustments but whenever i didn't face a weavile it actually the games weren't that difficult uh i want to say but yeah, that's basically the team. Once again, I leave a poker paste link in the description. And I'm going to show you a game using this team. Um, in, the, in this week, I will also upload some other uh, battles using this team against other teams. Uh, some will include against rain teams. So definitely stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, I hope you guys will enjoy the battle. Yo, what's up guys? My name is AFC and I got a game against my boy HyperX. Uh, ooh, Hyper gonna looking really spicy in this game actually. Dark Pulse, oof. If I'm able to get Hydrogen in on uh, some defensive months, it could be nice. We've all also really nice with the knockoff, but I feel like Tornadus is going to give me the uh, best overall lead. As he has up leading with his Excadrill. Could be like a Focus Sash lead with Stealth Rocks maybe. So I'm just gonna go for the knockoff. Uh, see what he does. I'm bringing uh, a Regenerator core team actually guys. Uh, with Tornado, Slow King and Tangrowth. Um, you guys are interested. But he ends up going into the Rotom as I hit him with the knockoff. And... We get rid of the leftovers. Could be nice for Hydrogen later. I uh, went spamming Dark Pulse. And I go for U turn, which makes it even easier for Hydrogen. And I'm going into Tangrowth. As he ends up going for the Volt Switch. The only thing that threatens my Tangrowth on his team is the Volcarona. <clears throat> As he does end up bringing in the Volcarona. Uh, hopefully, this is not like a Lumberry Volcarona. Could be bad. But I'm bringing in my Heatran. Heatran lives a 1 plus 1. Uh, hidden power ground if he does have it so i'm going to go for the toxic as he does reveal the hp ground and i do connect the toxic he ends up not being lumberry which is nice for me and now i have to switch around this thing i'm going into tornadoes first good could have gone slow king um but Tornado should live any hit. He's only at plus one, so I don't die to a flamethrower. As he ends up going for Quiver Dance. Uh, now I am going to go into Sloking. 
slow king should live any hit he does go for the giga drain 64 and that does not that much considering it's super effective and plus two so slow king actually ate that up um like i would love to go back into tornadoes here uh you might be crazy and go for hidden power ground right now. I don't, still don't think he's going to go for the fire type of deck because Sloking lives it. Um, Heatran is obviously has flash fire, so he just goes for the double Giga Drain, and this thing is getting slowly worn down. Uh, Twenty-four percent already uh, on a poison damage, and I'm going back into Sloking. Giga Drain still doesn't knock me out from the HP I'm at, but he ends up switching into the Rotom because the poison damage was really wrecking up and at this point I might as well just go for the Scald, nothing on his team appreciates to be to take the Scald or get burnt aka Azumarill, so he's most likely bringing in the Amoongus, but this still gives me a chance to burn uh, the Amoongus, so I might as well try to go for it. Could have also gone for the side shock uh, looking back <laughs> at the decision I made a few seconds ago, but I do end up getting the burn. Side shock would have, wouldn't have been bad either, and a 2 hit KOs the Among Us. But yeah, we can't turn back time. So I'm going into Heatran. Uh, I don't really care if he does end up sporing here. Uh, the point of bringing in Heatran is getting leftovers recovery because Giga Drain doesn't do. does doesn't do more damage than I get gain from leftovers but he went for the sl uh, sludge bump over sporing so I, I actually end up getting the stealth rocks here as he actually goes hard Excadrill what <laughs> what if I cl click the fire type attack on an Amoongus which is not uh, not uncommon to do <laughs> But it, that guy just went hard, Excadrill. I could have predicted the rapid spin and went for Lava Plume there, but I don't, don't really need to. I can play it slowly. He's getting worn down, but I'm hiding behind my Regenerator mounts here as well. I could have expected the Among Us to come in, um, but um, it's always a free switch into my Heatran. And once again, I don't mind him sporing uh, the Heatran. The point is basically to get Heatran uh, back healthy again. Does end up going for the Spore. And here... I'm going to make a double into Hydrogun in case he wants to switch, in, uh, switch into the Rotom. Goes into the... Does end up going into the Rotom, so... That works out for me. I can just click Dark Pulse. Actually, that would have so, doubling into Hydrogun was actually a bad play because if, if he doubled into a Zumara and ended up being Belly Drum, could have been bad for me. But it works out now. I'm bringing my Tangrowth because I did get the uh, Dark Pulse damage off, and he doesn't uh, end up being Belly Drum because I don't see a Citrus Berry, and that's most likely Choice Band damage. But if he Belly Drummed right there. Um, Hydrogen could have revenge killed it because it doesn't die to a plus six aqua jet from full HP. And I'm just going to go for the sludge bump as he does end up bringing in the Among Us. And I'm just going to repeat this uh, every time. Just bring in my Heatran on the Among Us. Because every double he makes doesn't really matter. Uh, because um, Landorus, Excadrill, Azumarill, Rotom gets walled by my uh, Tangrowth. And I have Slow King. And he, yeah, sloking for the Volcarona. So, he does end up going for the attack. I could make a double into Hydrogen again, but I think I might as well try to burn a sleep turn here. I also gained some leftovers recovery, which is not bad. So, that's one sleep, sleep turn burned. And again, Azumaru gets walled by my Tangrowth. That's why I'm not afraid of bringing in my Heat Run on the Among Us every time. Goes for a waterfall. And I could predict the Amoongus again. But I I really don't need to. I really don't need to. And the funny thing is I haven't clicked a recovery move once. <laughs> it's all passive recovery from Regenerator and Leftovers. So I bring in my Heatran now. Getting another 6%. 
he does double into the Excadrill. And uh, I have Tangrowth for this, but I'm going into my Tornadoes first in case he is Stealth Rocks. Because he did lead off with the Excadrill. Goes for Iron Head. That actually does quite some damage. I think this is Max Attack. Could still be a Focus Sash Drill, so I'm going into Tangrowth. He does end up staying in. So, kind of tells me it's Scarfed as well, because uh, he went for the double Iron Head on the Tornadoes, which is faster. But I'll go for HP Ice there. It's everything. And Ganamungus coming in. And we'll just do the same thing. And because I think the Excadrill is Choice Scarfed now, that Landorus might be defensive with Stealth Rocks. Goes for Sludge Bomb, which means I get another uh, <laughs> opportunity to try to wake up. I'm uh, going for Stealth Rocks here. Because the moment I get up Rocks, I think I win. Goes into Full Corona now. Um, I'm going hard into my Slow King. He could Quiver Dance if he wants to. Not a big deal. We saw how much uh, plus 2 Giga Drain did to my Slow King, so I'm not really worried. And what I can do now is... Um, I can just... Uh, a tornado is, is, is a bit iffy. I'm going into Heatran. I don't think he's going for the Hidden Power Ground. Because I have Slow King out, I might as well just click Scald. Yeah, he goes for Giga Drain. And... Poison ticking again. 18% already. And now we're going into Slow King. Going for another Quiver Dance. And he's at plus 2, and we saw plus 2 didn't knock us out. Did about 60%, I believe. So what I might as well do is just slack off there. As he ends up predicting my heat run and going for the HP ground. So it works out. Even if he did go for Giga Drain, all the Giga Drain recovery he got would have been negated by the poison damage. So we get rid of the full Corona and now there's really nothing on his team that threatens my uh, Tangrowth. So I'm, I'm bringing it in right now. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to... At this point, I might end up going to win easily, I think. Uh, I could bring in Heatran, but I'm just gonna stay in. Go for Sludge Bomb as he brings in the Among Us. I feel like he should have just a double play rough there and hoped for the crit there, because in the long run, I'm going to win. Because I, I can keep this up because of my regenerator. Obviously, he has a bad matchup against me. Because uh, his only way of winning was through the Volcarona, I believe. His Volcarona with HP Ground had the coverage to beat down my team, but he had to click the right moves. <laughs> yeah, he makes a double into the Landorus, and again, that's completely fine. I bring in my Tornadus, because uh, I believe this is the Stealth Rocker, as uh, Stealth Rock does end up coming out. Going for the Defog here. Could be annoying if he is toxic, but we'll see. Goes for the Hidden Power Ice, which... Doesn't do that much. And because I defogged last turn, I might as well Hurricane here. Because um, it guarantees hits on the Landorus. Uh, because I dropped his evasiveness. And yeah, I'll just defog the Stealth Rocks again. Yeah, I really believe if I, once I get up Rocks, it's over for him. Because then he cannot really double around anymore. Uh, I don't see leftovers on this Rotom. Um... I think it's better to just switch in case he's also scarfed. Goes for a Volt Switch. Gets a crit. Amungus comes in and. <laughs> Should I bring in Tornadoes? Nah, there's no, re there's no real reason. I, Like I said before, I can always just bring in my Heatran. The moment he attacks, I'm getting up rocks, but he doubles into Lando, which is fine. <laughs> he turned almost at full HP. <laughs> A few moments ago, we were at the brink of dying. But he goes for rocks again, which is fine. I'll just defuck them away easily. Goes for HP ice again, 32. But I 
regenerate this damage this damage with my ability and we'll just click her again Rotop ends up coming in and now he's in range of dark pills from Hydra Gun. I'll just bring in the tank rope again. As he goes for the... Oh wait, I knocked off... Yeah, I knocked off his leftovers at the beginning. Completely forgot about it. But it's fine. I don't see this Rotom as a threat. So, Amoongus comes in. And now I actually kind of want to make... Try to make a play. Since I make... Uh, the hit each one play. I might. I'm going to click HP eyes and hopefully I catch the Landorus. That would be nice. Does end up going for a switch and he brings in the. Oh wait, I should have actually clicked Leaf Storm here. Uh, that would have killed the Rotom, but it would also have hit the Landorus because Landorus was about 50%. So I would have done a lot of damage to Landorus and maybe even killing him. But I'm bringing in the Slow King because. Bolt switch that's 31, but I regenerate all this damage back with my ability. He just lacks a setup Pokemon. If he had something like a Sword Stance or Belly Trim on a zoo, he could he could have broken through my team. But yeah, I, I'll just call it here. He goes for U-turn, which does quite some damage. But yeah, once again, Slow King's damage uh, defense is also not that great. I'm just gonna go for the skull. I don't mind burning this either. Don't get the burn, but it's fine. Uh, we just bring in the Tangrowth. And my Pokemon were never low. The only Pokemon that got low was my Heatran, but Heatran is almost back at full HP. Uh, then the rest comes in. Completely fine. Um, we'll, we'll just go Tornadus. I just don't want to give him rocks. As he goes for the HP eye. So I could have actually killed him. But this is still more, the more consistent play in my opinion. Because he doesn't get rocks. And now I can go for the U-turn. If he does end up staying in, I can bring a tank rope. But if he switches, I get the initiative. He goes into the road zone. And this U-turn damage guarantees me... Uh, the kill on the road zone if he stays in with Hydro, with hydro Gun. So... We just click Dark Pulse, uh, the, the Amoongus is burnt, so uh, Amoongus does end up coming in. And he cannot put my Hydra gonna sleep, uh, because Heatron is still sleeping. Knowing this, uh, he's probably going to go for the Sludge Bomb, so I'm bringing in my Heatron. Because he could he could make another switch, but anything else gets 2 hit KO'd by Dark Pulse, as he does go for Sludge Bomb. And I should be waking up, because I, I already burnt 2 sleep turns, and I'm finally... I should be able to wake up here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm finally able to get up my stealth rocks. And this is the beginning of the end, I think. Because I'll bring in my tank rope. And if the Excadrill wants to spin, that means he's going to die, basically. Because he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't have an, He doesn't have leftovers. So every damage I get on the Excadrill is permanent. But I'll just earthquake here in case he wants to bring in the Excadrill. He ends up giving up, but I think we displayed this regenerated team pretty well in this game. Uh, my Pokemon never got low, only the Heatron because he need he had to tank that uh, hidden power crown. But I hope you guys enjoyed it.